All right, thank you for joining us today. My name is Brenda and I'm the Director of Programming at Sea Kids Dream. I wanted to let you know a little bit about what we're doing and who we are. Um, sea Kids Dream provides service learning programs to schools so their students can gain important leadership skills while making our world a better place. Some of the student leaders at the schools who participate in our service learning programs couldn't complete their in-person interviews with local nonprofit organizations before schools closed. So we're hosting these organizations on here so students can do virtual interviews. These interviews are important so students can get their questions answered and take what they learn to decide the best way to help the issues that are important to them. We're so happy today to be hosting um, Mona from Colony Cats and Dogs, welcome. Thank you, how are you? Good, good. We're so excited that you're here today. Um, we'll have some student questions. I'm going to get over here to my Facebook feed and see uh, what questions students are asking. And then I also have some that students sent to me today. So we'll get go ahead and get started with those. So right. question that says, um, let's see. Um, I, the students want to know what kind of animals do you guys help? We help primarily cats, but um, we also help dogs. And every now and then we'll have a rabbit or a pig or a guinea pig. So we sort of do all the uh, domesticated um, animals. Um, so um, I have another uh, question from a student. Is what, um, how many animals do you usually rescue in a day? Well, it depends on um, what exactly is going on in the community. Right now, we're getting a lot of moms with um, kittens. Some of them are newborn, some of them are a little older. But, but one example would be Saturday, we got in three moms and each of them had either four to six kittens. So Saturday was a very busy day for us. But um, usually when there's not so many kittens, it might be two or three adult cats a day. Um. Another question from students is how many animals do you adopt out each year? Well, usually about about 1500 or so. Um, it's mostly cats because that is our primary thing. But um, last year we did almost 100 dogs. So um, we do dogs also. So um, we, we do pretty good. Okay. Um, a follow-up question from one of the students is, um, in your shelter, do you just have cats? So then what do you do with the dogs? Yes, the shelter is only cats, and then the dogs are in foster homes. We have a network of foster homes that keep the dogs until they find their homes. So if someone wants to meet one of those dogs, we set up a time with the foster. Um, another uh, student question that I have is, um, how many animals do you have in your shelter right now? You know, right now we probably have in, in the actual shelter about 75 cats, but then with all the moms and kittens we have in our foster network, we probably have close to 300 or 350 cats right now. And, and then dogs, um, we have about 10 or 12 at, at the most usual time. Um, so an another question from students is, how has the um, recent uh, lockdown situation and all that with the uh, uh, shelter in place affected um, your operations? Well, it's, it's made a big impact on the number of adoptions we're doing because we obviously can't be open to the public like we usually are. We're um, setting up appointments so that we can keep the numbers of folks in the shelter down to a minimum so nobody gets um, in each other's space. And um, our numbers have gone down quite a bit. And that also means then that um, people aren't coming in just to visit and that takes donations down. So everything is being affected in not really a very positive way at all. Um, so, uh Another question I have from a student is, <clears throat> how long has your organization been around? Colony Cats itself has been around for about 19 years. Our shelter has been open for over 10 now. And um, the numbers keep going up every year as far as adoptions go. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to make up for the losses later this year that we're experiencing right now. Um, so uh, another question that the student has is, um, what do you do to help animals that you get in that have maybe disabilities or are sick? 
Well, everything is always checked by a vet pretty much as soon as it comes in. Um, if they have any illnesses or anything that needs um, special care, it will, we have a vet that comes in once a week, but then we also use various vet hospitals. So we'll take it to the vet hospital. If it needs some sort of surgery, it will get taken care of there. Um, a lot of times the illness part is just some medication that we can do um, in our intake area. So we're able to take care of that ourselves. But um, everything is checked out and um, we try to make sure they're all healthy before they go up for adoption. Now, sometimes that might mean having a leg amputated or an eye removed or a tail amputated. But, um, you know, once they're healthy and, and um, have a good quality of life, they go up for adoption. Um, so a student wants to know, um, how many volunteers do you have every year and how um, old do you have to be to volunteer? Um, we have probably, um, probably about 200 volunteers. Some of them come in every week. Others only volunteer for special occasions, um, special events. We have um, a lot of foster families that don't actually come to the shelter, but they certainly are a very important part of what we do. And then as far as age, um, any, anyone under 14 usually has to have a parent with them. And um, if they're over 14 and they're mature, so we don't have to babysit, then they can often come by themselves after their parents have been with them for the first time or so. Great, great. Um, so um, another question I have from a student is um, they want to know, do you take in wild animals at all? The wild animals, we're just not um, set up for that at all. That would be something for like the wildlife uh, um, sanctuary or the wildlife center. We do a lot of the feral cats, which are technically wild cats. We don't take those in though. We offer trap, neuter, return, which helps them um, get spayed and neutered so that they're not having kittens out there. Um, that is a, a, a follow-up question from one of, the one of the students then is, do you um, spay and neuter all of the animals that you have? Absolutely, that's one of the biggest, uh, biggest things we do. We help people with their pets if they need spayed or neutered, anything that gets adopted gets spayed or neutered, neutered. and then of course the trap neuter return for the unowned cats that are in the community. Um, another question I have from a student is, um, how long have you had um, some cats staying in your shelter? You know, I think the longest one we have right now has been here about two years. Um, and we, we did have one, one went home just this weekend that had been with us for about seven years. So that oh, was wow. a that was a really exciting thing for us, but she was a shy little cat and um, the, it was a volunteer that adopted her, but she knew her and so she was, but that was a definitely seven years is a long time to be here. Yeah, yeah. Um, another question um, that a student wants to know is um, what, were in, what inspired you to help animals and work with Colony Cats and Dogs? Um, well, it just, uh, I've always loved animals and always had animals, um, rescued them when I was uh, just a young girl back, back in Southern Ohio. And as I got older, I realized that the problem was more than just taking in a few cats here and there. It was just so big that we needed to get a lot of people involved and, and try to help get as many adopted and fixed as we could. Um, so another question from a student, I'm not sure if you answered this already, was um, how many animals do you see every year? Well, if you add in um, the ones that we adopt out, which um, most of those come in in the same year and then are adopted out in the same year, plus the ferals that we do, um, it's, it's well over 3,000 animals. Um, let's see if I have another student question. Um, um, how, the student wants to know, how did you um, come up, how did they come up with the name? Do you know for Colony Cats and Dogs? <laughs> you know, the, the feral cats um, that are out in the community, they live in what is called a colony. 
And since um, spay neuter and trapping were such a big part of how we originally got started, that's where the name came from. It's um, Colony Cats is from the cats that live in the colonies out in the community. Very cool, very cool. Um, what other things do you think it's important for students to know about your organization? Well, we certainly try to help as many animals as we can. Obviously, funding is a big part of that. Um, we're all volunteers, so anything that um, comes into us financially goes back into the animals, whether it's to take care of the, the vet care or the, the rent for here at the shelter, um, but it all goes for the animals. Um, another student question um, I just got is, um, what kind of, what is your needs right now if, if somebody would do donations for you? If someone wanted to do like a supply donation, um, we certainly always need um, litter, clay and clumping. We always need canned cat food. We always need bleach, paper towels, garbage bags, those kind of things so that we can um, keep everybody clean and happy and healthy. Um, and then they want to know if they do donate money to your organization, um, do they, can they specify what it's donated to, or do you have a certain really big need right now um, for your, the money? Um, you know, the majority of our funds go for the vet, vet care, whether it's for the actual spays and neuters that the animals get, or um, medicine, or vaccines, or any of that. If they wanted to donate it for something specific, that would be fine. Um, you know, sometimes we'll have a specific animal that we're trying to raise money for that might need a big surgery or, or procedure. So, you know, we could certainly work with them if that was something that they wanted to do specifically and come up with a plan. Um, another question um, from a student is, um, what does it, what do you have to do if you want to adopt um, an animal? Well, we have an application we ask you to fill out. And um, once we get that application processed, if you have already picked the animal you want, then we'll set up a time for you to meet that animal and make sure it's the right one for you. If you haven't decided on a specific animal, then we would set up an appointment so that you could meet everybody that we have available and make your decision. And then there's a contract and we go over the vet records for you. Um, and to follow up for that, they want to know is what's the cost for um, adopting? A small kitten is a hundred, and an adult cat is seventy-five. So it um, includes their spay or neuter, testing for the viruses, uh, vaccines, microchip, flea and worm treatment. Terrific, terrific. Um, I know you had mentioned you want to kind of maybe give a tour of your um, space. Yes, if we can do that. <laughs> I'm sure they want to see a couple of kitties here and there. Yes. <laughs> How do you do this? Ah, okay. <laughs> see how we do this. <laughs> I'm going to turn it around and uh, kind of see if I see that instead. Okay. So as you can see, we have boxes on the wall. The kitties can be in. We have a lot of furniture for them as well. And we have, let's see, we'll go into this room. We have, oh, about four or five different rooms they can all kind of hang out in. Hey, buddy. And then we've got some sleepy heads here. <laughs> There's she, all right. Maybe I'm moving too slow. There she is. Who else here? This is kind of the feeding station here. Again, I can't see what I'm showing you. Sorry yeah, about I that. I can see that. That's Here's all right. I can see it. From girl. Who else? Maybe you. These are all the ones watching the video. <laughs> One almost. Uh, Photo bombed it, but she, uh, we caught her before this one here. So, yeah. <laughs> a lot of babies. Yeah. A lot of babies. Yeah. We've got a little Zen room. That's for our shy cats. And we can go in here. 
It's an enclosed room with a door. I think we really only have a couple shy ones right now. Here's one. Ooh, that was too loud, wasn't it? So this is kind of our, uh, we have a little Buddha. Keep the energy uh, nice and mellow. <laughs> Now we actually uh, don't have a whole lot of young kitties here right now, but this room here is our junior room. So it's going to be kittens that are a little older, but still under one. See if we can get in here. We're actually getting a makeover in here, courtesy of uh, Whole Foods. So we'll be getting some new furniture in here, but we've got some great uh, wall art and a lot of sleepy heads. Here, where are you? There you are. Yeah. So, yeah, guys. Yeah, there's a few more. So, yeah. So, that's our junior room. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I'm glad yeah. to see your space. The kids don't usually get to see that. So, yeah, that's what I uh, wanted to certainly do when we found out we we're going to be doing Zoom. So, yes, yeah. yes. Well, um, we really want to thank you guys for taking the time to talk to us today and answer the students' questions. Well, thank you for uh, including us. It's, it's a wonderful program, and, and we certainly appreciate all you've done in the past. Uh, well, we really appreciate your partnership, and we know that you give the kids some really great information about how to, you know, how to help um, with animals in need. We really appreciate it. And if anybody wants to learn more about Colony Cats and Dogs, they can go to our website, ckidsdream.org. And on our service hub, we have a page set up for them. So you can learn and then uh, link to their information to um, learn more about them. Thank good. you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day.